Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Des Moines County Supervisors Forum conducted by the Greater Burlington Partnerships Government Relations Committee. I'm Bob Bartles from Hope Haven, a member of the committee, and I'll be your moderator this afternoon. Rachel Lindine will be the timekeeper. A special thank you to the forum sponsor, the Hawkeye. In this election cycle, there are two of the three seats for the Des Moines County Board of Supervisors on the ballot. It's a contested race between the incumbents, Bob Beck and Jim Carey, and the challengers, Nina Covert and Shane McCampbell. Today, this forum will have a number of rounds of questions to which candidates will have up to two minutes to respond. The order of response will be rotated so that each candidate has the opportunity to be the first to answer a question. Candidates have not seen the questions in advance. I do ask that candidates observe the signals from our timekeeper and stop your response when the time has expired, in fairness to the other candidate. We'll likely conclude the forum within an hour. Candidates have been placed in alphabetical order. Each candidate will now have an opportunity to give a two minute opening statement. Because of the Zoom uh, folks, I don't know which one of you is first, but uh, which one is, Rachel? Pardon? I couldn't hear that, so we'll just go with Bob Beck. It's got to be the bees. Bob's got a good first name. <laughs> I agree with you, Bob. Uh, I am Bob Beck. I've been on your board of supervisors for 16 years. And uh, we've had quite a few changes. Most of them, I believe, are good changes. Uh, and that would be mainly in the tax rate, which we have uh, reduced almost every year, uh, not always. We've run through some trials and tribulations like everybody else has. But uh, when I first ran for this job, I said the money needs to stay in the taxpayer's pocket, not in our pockets. And uh, <clears throat> when we need to go for money, then we have to do it. I've been a farmer in Des Moines County all my life. I'm retired, and uh, I was never a big fan of paying a lot of taxes. It was, uh, it was a very big drain on our uh, cash flow. So when, uh, when somebody comes along and wants to uh, try to help me with that, I appreciate it. I've enjoyed this job more than you can imagine. A lot of people, when I say what I'm doing, the Board of Supervisors turn up their nose, say I wouldn't do that for nothing, but it's very enjoyable. You meet a lot of great people, and this county would not run without the volunteers that uh, are signed up to uh, help us, like conservation or, uh, see, we appoint, we appoint people to so many boards and the best part about government is if you put good people in those positions, uh, like our health department. So with uh, your support and your vote, I'd be glad to serve another four years and keep working on your tax rate. Jim, you would be next. Jim Carey. I'm Jim Carey. I've been on the Board of Supervisors for eight years. Uh, I enjoy what I'm doing, uh, working for the county. I was born and raised in Des Moines County and uh, only spent about six years out of the county and have been a lifelong resident. During our tenure on the uh, board, we have uh, now have the lowest tax levy that we've had in 19 years for the urban, and we've got the lowest uh, rural levy that we've had in the last 17 years. We've done this by working together with the elected officials and uh, department heads, and I really enjoy what I'm doing for the county. 
uh, we was elected to do a job, and this is what we're doing is trying to keep the tax rate down. When I came on board, why my the object was to take care of public safety. And we've done that by working with the county engineers and the sheriff's department because they're both public safety and it keeps our infrastructure up, which uh, is real important. If we don't have good infrastructure, we cannot have a good economy in Des Moines County. So I would uh, like your vote for another term on the board so I can continue working hard for Des Moines County residents. Thank you. Nina Covert, you would be next. Hi, I'm Nina Covert. I have been a Des Moines County resident, born and raised. I did spend about five years outside of Des Moines County. Um, otherwise, I've been there my entire life. And I am running because, honestly, I was asked to look into it um, by a couple people with the county health and a couple people that work for our jail. And I just want to bring a fresh pair of eyes to uh, help our community out a little bit better. and make sure that we have a fresh pair of ears as well to listen to everybody in the community. I know you can't help everybody, especially in one term or even 10 terms, but I do want to be that fresh pair of eyes and ears for our community. Thank you. Shane McCampbell, you're next. Uh, my name is Shane McCampbell. I'm a lifelong resident of Burlington, Iowa, actually born and raised um, I was actually born in the Mercy Building, which is now the Chamber of Commerce. So probably somewhere on this table <laughs> uh, 51 years ago. Um, I've served eight years on city council, and I served six of those years uh, as the mayor of the city of Burlington. So I got to see quite a few things. Um, when, we, when I first got elected uh, on the council, uh, we, were, we were bankrupt. We had to uh, borrow money to make payroll. And... Uh, in the eight years that I was on the council, uh, we reversed uh, uh, that trend and we started to build up our reserve. And uh, I'd like to think that I had something to do with that. I would also like to, uh, to let Des Moines County know that I will be ears to listen to your problems. Nobody goes into any seat, no one at all. So you have to be open to listening to the residents. And I listen. When I was on the city council, I listened to people, I listened to dogs, and I listened to roosters. I was telling that to my daughter. She started laughing. She said, Dad, you're, you're stupid. I said, no. I had to get up early in the morning because we had complaints from one was a, a dog owner at an undisclosed location. It was a dog owner, and the other one was a resident that had a rooster problem. And I had to literally go and listen to the rooster, and I did. I went to that residence. I listened to that rooster. And I want to be honest with you, that rooster had a lot to say that morning. But the same way that I listened to the rooster and the dog, I'm going to listen to the citizens I'm going to do what's best for them because it all comes down to me is quality of life. And when you put clothes on that, it looks different to a lot of people, but you've seen my resume for the last eight years. Uh, you know where I stand on issues. And uh, I would like to think that um, I've earned your trust. So I'm running for Des Moines County supervisor because I love my community. I'm not going anywhere. And uh, I want to make an investment into the community that has invested in me. So I hope I have your vote November 3rd. My first question is going to be uh, for all of you, and here, here it would be, it would be, there are many issues facing Des Moines County. If your term in office could only be known for one thing, what would you like that issue to be and why? And I'll start with Bob Beck. Well, that's a, that's a hard question to answer knowing how many issues we have to face. Um, we have a drug problem, which leads to uh, mental health problems, which uh, also leads to uh, crime. Jim mentioned public safety, and that, that drug problem would be uh, a big part of that, that uh, public safety. <sighs> If I could, uh, I guess if I could get one thing, I'd take the drugs off the streets. Mm 
You would be next, yeah. Well, one thing I'd like to say, like I, when I ran eight years ago, I ran for public safety, and public safety is a lot to do with the sheriff's department and the infrastructure of our county uh, roads and right of ways and everything, our bridges. I would like to be known for what we've done, added uh, jail staff to help out at the jail. We've added uh, deputy sheriffs and increased that. And like Bob says, we got a lot of drug problems. And by doing this, it might help keep these druggies off the street. If the more of them we can put behind them bars and ship them out of here, the better off we are. But now we do have the dual diagnosis, and I know that drugs are a problem with mental illness too. And I would like to uh, be known for them three things and, and help take care of the people that's got mental illness and get, and get them uh, rehab. So, thank you. Nina, Robert, you would be next. Uh, I absolutely agree with Bob and Jim on this issue. Um, <laughs> drugs is definitely a, a problem in our community, and we definitely need to get that under control. There's been many instances where the drugs have taken effect of the safety of the community when it involves the violence. And that's not only against community members, that's against our police force or public safety as well. And I absolutely 100% agree with Bob and Jim on that one. Um, I would definitely like to see more, more help with, with all of that. Thank you. Shane? Can you repeat the question? One thing that I would want to be no, there, are no. many, there are many issues facing Des Moines County. If your term of office could only be known for one thing, what would you like that issue to be and why? That's a hard question, um, and it's a good question. It's what Bob Beck said. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I'll have to answer it um, uh, with tentacles. I would say my, my one issue that I'd like to be recognized for that I'm going to tackle is uh, quality of life. Uh, post uh, COVID-19. Uh, uh, years ago, many, many moons ago, when I was in college, I, I had a sociology class and they said a social problem is when it affects a small group of people. That, that becomes a social problem because what affects a small group of people ends up affecting everybody else. So when I look at one thing, uh, I just have to look at quality of life and what does quality of life look like when you put clothes on it? Um, mental health, where that's something that uh, it's going to be in the forefront of everybody's minds just because of the fact that now with COVID-19, uh, we have uh, more poverty with, the mental, with people that have mental health issues. We have more poverty. We have uh, more depression uh, because people are more isolated and they're also more fearful. Um, so uh, what is that going to do? It's going to increase uh, the calls for people with mental health issues. Uh, we also have the silver tsunami that we're dealing with. People in Des Moines County are living longer. So we have to make sure that uh, they're comfortable uh, in their golden years. I, I said something to, I've got two minutes on this, right? I said something to, just let me know when my time is up. I was talking to my daughter and she said, Dad, whatever you do, don't say this, because, but this is how I feel. We're, we're all dying. We're all dying. The day that you're born, you take, every day that we live is a day that we're closer to death. Whenever you're dealing with anybody that is dying, the first thing that people say is, well, let's make sure we give them the best quality of life. That's what you say. Well, if we know that every day that we live and we don't know when that time is going to be, to me, I think uh, if we focused on quality of life uh, for each and every person, for, for elderly people, um, quality of life is making sure that they can uh, keep the fruits of their labor and have a place in this community where they can spend their money and enjoy themselves. Is that my time? I didn't see the 30 seconds. Sorry. The next question is for Bob and Jim only, and Jim, I'll have you go first on it. As the incumbents, it is fair to ask you a couple of things. What is your greatest accomplishment during your time of service? And similarly, 
what is some unfinished business you wish would have had better progress? Jim, you're first. Uh, my biggest comp accomplishment has been lowering the levy. Uh, when I when I went in office, our levy was around four dollars and a quarter. Now we've got that's the general basic levy. Now we've got it down to three dollars and fifty cents, which the state says we should have. Uh, I think that's a good accomplishment, but I didn't do all that by myself. I did that working with the other supervisors and good department heads and elected officials. And what we're still working on is we've got a lot of mental health out there. And the SEAL region is, uh, we've, we've still got to support support our mental health and, and our uh, dual diagnosis centers and get these people help that need help. And that's what I would really like to keep on working on. And uh, outside of that, sitting on several boards, Bob, uh, I've had a uh, good, good time working on these boards. I got nominated, uh, elected for the uh, chairman of the Southeast Iowa Crime Commission and elected chairman of the Southeast Iowa Juvenile Detention. And seeing the juveniles that we see in these uh, homes and that, I think we still have to do a lot of work with our, with our children. And a lot of that's got to start at home. And I would like to see more programs to take, take care of these kids. If we get them kids off the streets at this age, we're not going to have them in our jails when they turn my age. So that's it, and thank you. I'm back. Um, answering the biggest accomplishments is pretty tough. Uh, I think that one of the things I'm really proud of is Highway 61 corridor. Um, when I first ran, I mentioned that we needed to get the highway built so we could get to the north safe and sound, more commerce. Uh, and uh, when I mentioned that, I think I picked up the ears of the Chamber of Commerce and they uh, got in touch with all the other chambers up and down the river. And we formed the 61 Coalition and we started going to Des Moines and uh, Ames and wherever the commissioners were meeting and uh, giving testimonies to why we needed this. Uh, regional planning was a big help in that also. Um, and I think probably one of the biggest disappointments, as I also mentioned when I first ran, we needed to make a asset out of that river. And um, the last I heard, the bottom of that river had come up a foot and a half. So uh, <clears throat> we worry about floods, but we don't take care of the problem. One of these days, those old dikes up there, those locks and dams are going to break because the concrete's going to wear out right away. And that all needs to be fixed. And we finally got the, um, we got the legislation in to fix it. Now we can't get it funded. And if we do get it funded, the first percentage of it goes to the environmentalists to do another study. When they've studied the bottom of those snails, they ought to know where we want them to live and invite them to leave. Um, it's a, I think that's a real discouraging when our government doesn't doesn't see a problem as big as that Mississippi for what it handles in commerce, both up and down the river. You cannot haul transportation any cheaper. Um, the one thing this country, the fry ag community, we done? Yeah. Okay. All right. My next question is for Shane and Nina. And Nina, you'll go first. As a challenger, how would you outline your qualifications to represent this county of 40,000? Well, I would say my qualifications are, I don't know what you're really looking for, qualifications, I guess, um, for a board supervisor, but, um, you know, I have been out in the community with both, with all of my job positions that I have held and I do listen to the community uh, with everything that I have always taken part in. And I've always tried to make the change that the community wants and needs. And I think with my qualifications of just being able to 
uh, keep a strong head and really fight for our community. I think that's a good um, quality in itself to be able to be headstrong and go to bat for what our community wants and needs. Mm -hmm. I hate to do this to you, Bob, but you're going to have to repeat that to me again. As, the, as a challenger, how would you outline your qualifications to represent this county of 40,000? Well, I, I have experience with uh, 25 of those 40 um, uh, for eight years. And I've dealt with, uh, with big budgets, with uh, $60 million budgets for the last eight years. Um, which is a considerable uh, about amount of money to have to deal with. Um, I feel like um, I have developed, whether I had it before or not, I, maybe I didn't realize it, but I, I found out that I have thick skin. Uh, in this position, people are going to run you over, and some of your good friends won't talk to you anymore. I still have an old teacher. She was a, not old, but she was a teacher back in the day, and she's angry about me about something, and she still will not wave to me to this day. And I hope that someday she changes her mind. Uh, but you have to understand that those are the things that you have to take uh, when you're dealing with a community, when you're dealing with more than one person other than yourself. And we all know that we can argue with ourselves at times. So, no, you have to be, develop that. You have to know that um, people are going to challenge you. Uh, they're going to challenge your credibility. And I'm okay with that. I also feel like my qualifications uh, extend to this 40000 because – I've had pressure situations uh, over the eight years on council, and I won't regurgitate some of the ugly ones because uh, there's no point in going to all of that. Uh, but I have dealt with some very high stress, high pressure situations. I was mayor during the Ferguson riots, and during those riots, there was an element, an outside element that was trying to bring that into the city of Burlington. And I would like to think that my leadership uh, kept that from happening, not just me. We had a strong council, a strong city manager, a strong pol uh, police chief. Uh, but that being said, I was the mayor at that time, and uh, a lot of the pressure was uh, sitting on me. I'm the type of person that when, uh, when things get tight, uh, my hand doesn't shake under pressure. I, I seem to excel. Um, so I, I feel like that's a quality that can be very advantageous to Des Moines County. And I'm fluid. I know that going into this post-COVID-19 world, what we, what we had our ideas and our thoughts going into it, they may have to adjust and change on the fly. And you have to be willing to make those adjustments and changes, knowing that every decision you make is going Hello. to be time. The next question will be for all of you. It is important for the larger area to be friendly to business. As an elected official in county government, what can you do to ensure Des Moines County is a great place to do business? we we'll start with you, Shane. Well, basically, I, it comes back to quality of life for me. And you can look at this a lot of different ways. You know, you can uh, look into um, working out uh, uh, deals, uh, so to say, or uh, assisting uh, for deals. But I would like to look at it in the, in the uh, perspective as making sure that the, the uh, farm to uh, uh, Farm to the grocery store. Yeah, I'm having the mine stuff to make sure that those roads are smooth. That, that helps Converse to make sure that they're getting clean water, to make sure that when they call for help, that help is coming at a very fast pace and they don't, they don't have to wait for it. When people can see that the needs, the basic needs that they have to be met, that they have access to food, uh, clean water, that they have utilities, and that they have good roads, um, when you have those services, uh, I think that's, that's the beginning. That's the platform or the foundation uh, for builders for building or business. And once you set that table, once you set that platform, it makes it easier for people to, to want to join in. So I'm not one to say uh, uh, to, to try to find things or look for things that we can try to get companies to look at Des Moines County and come in. I'm not, I'm not one of those guys, but I do think uh, that if you set the table, if you create an environment where people can be successful, if you create an environment where people feel like they're being heard and that uh, their investment dollars uh, will work for them in that community. If you're creating that environment, then it's going to happen organically and we don't have to go outside of the box or look for things that will come back and, re and we'll, we'll regret or that'll bite us in the foot later. No, we can do the natural things, just making sure that we're taking care of business, making sure that when somebody calls 911, that it goes to one uh, centralized unit and that they can get uh, people, fire and police, 
uh, to their establishment or to their business, uh, they want to know that as well. And uh, again, I, I just can't stress this enough. Nice roads, good roads to make sure that the ambulance can get to where it needs to go. Good roads to make sure that the fire department can get to uh, Bob Beck, I'll have you go next. Um, I, we, if I remember right, we were talking about the, how the cities, counties, and everybody gets along together. I'll repeat the question, Bob. It's important for the larger area to be friendly to business. As an elected official in county government, what can you do to ensure Des Moines County is a great place to do business? I think that we work together with um, Southeast Isle Regional Planning is one of the big ones. All four counties are in that. Uh, all the cities are represented. The small cities have their own representatives. Big cities have their own, each one of them. And uh, each uh, county has a board, one man off the board of supervisors sitting on it. And uh, we can discuss what goes on in the four, Southeast Iowa and all work toward the same. If um, something good happens in Henry County, it'll probably happen good in Des Moines County. Likewise, Lee and Louisa. So we all need to work together at where our transportation system comes together. And uh, I have heard before that as many people live in Henry County and work in Des Moines County as there are people that live in Des Moines County and work in Henry County. So there's a lot of cars moving. Uh, I think I think we just stay and we try the best we can to uh, use sane judgment on everything we do. Thank you. Nina, you'll be next. I think in order to, to help our businesses and bring more business in, I think um, like like they have all said, you know, with, with the roads, so you definitely need good roads, but you also need to make sure that the support from the community is there for the businesses, whether it be your small um, family-owned businesses or your corporation businesses that have been coming into the area. You have to have that support for the, I guess you could say the reviews to be out there. You know, if you go ahead and you state, you know, the community wants a certain uh, type of business in and you help make that happen, they're gonna continue to be supportive of all of the businesses, let alone just the local businesses. And making sure that our community is safe, our streets are safe, you can get from point A to point B without a problem. I think a lot of people from surrounding communities will come and support those businesses as well. Jim, you're next. Well, I, th I think the way, the way we've been doing over the last few years, uh, beefing up our uh, jail, beefing up our sheriff's department, taking care of our infrastructure, lowering the taxes, all of that jumps right in to making Des Moines County a better place to live. Uh, as long as we can keep the streets clean by beefing up the, the Sheriff's Department and uh, the infrastructure with the roads coming in and going out, our gravel roads in the county, uh, it, it's, it, it's real appetizing when somebody comes in our county and looks at our infrastructure. We do have some of the best infrastructure around, and uh, we spent a lot of a lot of time doing this. And our low taxes is going to be a draw. And if we can keep uh, the drugs off the streets, like we're working on real hard, Des Moines County is going to be the place to come. Thank you. How should funding for DESCOM be handled? And that's going to be a question for all of you. And I'd start with Jim. Well, DESCOM started out, when, when I came on board, we was paying Burlington a fee. Burlington took care of it. Well, Burlington and the cities got together and uh, formed DESCOM. 
Uh, Des Moines County was a big part of it, it was Burlington and the other thing. Uh, it could be funded. Right now we're, we're working on uh, the funding. It's in meetings and, and it's, it's really, it's a hard situation to talk about right now, Bob, but uh, they want to go to a countywide funding on it. Right now it's, uh, each, each entity is, is paying their, their own levy on this. <clears throat> but uh, it goes to countywide funding. As elected officials, we should be the ones that have the controlling vote. And I have no problem with it going to countywide funding as long as we have the controlling vote. It's very hard to have a board sitting around telling an elected official that we was elected to collect, to save their tax dollars and watch out for their tax dollars, to have somebody else that's sitting over there telling us how to spend our money. And if it goes countywide funding, and if we get that vote, you know, I have not a problem with it. Everything will stay the same. We can still have the board, uh, same responsibilities, but uh, that's that's my take on it. And I could get in, I could talk for everybody's two minutes on this, but I'm not going to, okay? All right. Nina, we'll have you be next. To be honest, I'm, I'm not too familiar with this uh, subject in, in general, um, so I, I really don't have much to say on this one. Um, I know no matter what, everything's going to be a learning process for me since, um, you know, this is all brand new to me, so I, I honestly don't have a uh, opinion on this at this moment. Shane, you would be next. Bob, you're asking me how should it be funded? Yes. Well, by the looks of it, it's going to be a levy, um, and that uh, uh, everybody's has already been paying a cut from the county to uh, the individual cities. Now, what they're what they are maneuvering through right now is trying to write up. Well, I'm not sure if they're going to or not. If they're in the process of writing up individualized 28 E agreements for every town and uh, if that's the route that they're going, I'm, I'm fine with that too. I don't care if it's one 2080 agreement with all, of, with all the communities or if it's individual 2080 agreements. As long as we put this thing to bed, uh, we make sure that everybody's paying their fair share and that we don't uh, have uh, any problems or, uh, or any breaks or breaches in the service. We've got a centralized unit where it's handled. They already have the infrastructure built in. And the way I look at uh, uh, 911, the way I look at Descom, it's the same way that I look at boots on the ground. You don't want to disturb that. You know, you don't want to take boots off the ground and you don't want to take away DESCOM or have it go from one area to another, somebody having their own uh, 911 service. We've, DESCOM is a good service for the community, for Des Moines County. Um, we've got great response time. And I just want to get this thing put to bed uh, so that it's a done deal going into perpetuity. So we have to babysit or come back and, and uh, visit this thing again and everybody can, uh, and be satisfied or, or can breathe easy knowing that if their fire breaks out, the fire trucks are coming fast. You know, if uh, they feel like, uh, like somebody's breaking into their yard, the police or the sheriff's department are coming fast. And we don't want any other uh, uh, breaks or where they have to call someplace or have to call another. Some communities have had uh, this similar situation where uh, there were issues, and that's what happened in their communities. They had separate uh, uh, 911 centers, whatever they called them. And when, uh, when somebody would call, they would have to send the call to, to another dispatch. And we all know uh, life and death, uh, sometimes it's just uh, seconds uh, that can make the difference. So I don't want to play with this. What I want to do is I want to get it put to bed. However, we're going to get paid for, make sure everybody's paying their share. And let's, let's move forward. Bob Beck? Let me go just a little farther back. When I got here, Rowan County had its own dispatch center, and Burlington had their dispatch center, and um, it was kind of a, it's kind of a mess, like Shane said. We uh, we worked hard to combine those together with uh, Major from the PD and our Chief Deputy spent hours trying to make it all work and combined it all. Um, in the interim, before before we got it all together. We stopped our dispatch 
and we hired the work done from Burlington, which in my way of thinking was very good because we really had a bargain. We are much more fair now and we have an excellent service. We have two dispatchers on duty 24 seven. So if one of them is working on the very patient with the heart attack that Shane was talking about and another one comes in with a fire, the first one doesn't have to stop. They can stay with it. And uh, we should be able to save lives and at least make lives a lot safer. Uh, as far as how it's funded, I'm with Jim. I don't care. We will, we will pick up the tab and pay the bill, uh, but we want say so. We do not want somebody coming in and telling us how to spend your money. Uh, it's a bad plan. And uh, as it is now, it is collected at $2.50 a head for every man, woman, and child. And it comes off of the city's budgets or the county's budget or however. But, um, and the cities want us to collect it all and they say, well, it's all coming out of our pockets anyway. Well, the difference is if you're an elected official, you have to answer for the monies you spend. If somebody else is telling you how to spend it, then you're no longer living up to that charge. My next question, I'm going to just talk, uh, ask two of you to answer it. And the two will be Shane and Bob, and Shane will go first. Here's the question. Parks and natural resources are a large part of quality of life and talent attraction for a, a robust workforce. What can be done to support, grow, and sustain our county conservation amenities? Shane. To grow them? Um, I wouldn't have a good answer for that. I think... Uh... We would have to talk to the parks people and see if they would be the experts on that. We would just have to make sure that we facilitate growth and make sure that we uh, maintain. And to me, that's, that's what's most important is any investment that a community makes, you have to think. There's a passage of scripture that says, what man buildeth a building without first counting the cost? Um, I'm all for uh, the parks. Post-COVID-19, though I think a lot of people were drove inside, they're going to be driven literally back outside into the parks uh, and the wildlife, the nature uh, that Des Moines County has to offer. And many of them are starting to re-experience that already. So I think in some effects, in some ways, that we don't have to do it all. That circumstance has done some of that for us. Um, and so uh, being in banquet halls, uh, that's not, uh, that being the norm, I think it's going to start being being outside in nature and being out in parks and that sort of thing. So I think what we what do we do? We maintain. We make sure that everything that we have it is still in good shape. That the roads to get there are in good repair. Um, I think that's the best thing that we can do there. And then that we listen. That we have an active and open ear. Uh, just as I listen to the rooster and the dog. Uh, that I'll listen to the professionals at that, and I'll hear what they have to say, and I'll take that into consideration. But I would say maintaining uh, is most important. You can't uh, you can't go anywhere and, and add to anything if you can't maintain what you have. Uh -huh. uh, it, when, uh, when Big Hollow, our conservation department is very active, and they've been that Big Hollow for 45, 50 years now, uh, and they have quite an, an uh, asset out there, and as long as Stars Cave, and uh, other little parks up and down the rivers, both rivers. Um, at the funding... Funding for our conservation, we have a, uh, a tax law from the state that says we will fund them, and we do, but we also expect them to use their power to uh, generate funds, and uh, they can go out and raise, people give them farms, they don't give our mental health department farms, uh, everybody wants clean water, clean air, and they Everybody thinks conservation is the cause of that. The recreation part is a big, big part of our lives, and we all need it. And we put uh, lots and lots of tax dollars into uh, building trails, 
and they do get used nowhere close to what Big Hollow gets. Big Hollow is uh, a huge success, and we're very proud of it. And we left the money that they make for them to use. So when they needed to expand their uh, park or uh, uh, camper site, they needed a sewer system. We loaned them the money, and they paid us back. But you can't get people to go out and build, donate to a sewer system for some reason. Uh, Shane could probably answer that. Uh, but we would uh, we would continue to do that. Uh, we support them. We want them to uh, find donors, people that are willing to help them build and uh, make our parks uh, better. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> my next question is for Jim and Nina, and we'll have Nina go first. The law enforcement program budget for Des Moines County is over $6.26 million for the fiscal year that we are currently in, which is an increase of almost 6.2% over the actual spending last year. Please provide specific examples of your experience successfully managing a budget of this size and provide details on areas where you believe that the law enforcement program budget for Des Moines County can be made more efficient to reduce overall spending. We'll start with Nina. I have not had experience in that large um, of an account yet. Um, I have had experience in regards to, I'm part of um, FRG, Family Readiness Group. I am the treasurer for that. So I do um, definitely have experience with a budget and everything. The, with police and everything, I'm a very strong believer in they need the training that they need and they need to uh, have all the protective gear that they need. They need to be safe out on those streets while they are protecting us. And I haven't looked at the numbers or anything for what that spending is on um, for it to be um, that much of an increase, but I have all the faith in our uh, police department and our sheriff's department, everything for uh, what they needed to spend the money on, we would definitely um, need to look at that a little bit closer to make sure that it's being spent wisely. Um, but they they definitely have need more support than what they're even getting now. So they uh, so they can stay safe to keep us safe. Yeah. Well, Bob, keep in mind that uh, this 6.2% uh, increase, we've added uh, we've added uh, three jailers and two deputies on there. And along with that, when you get to the insurance policies, uh, there are $20,000 per family policy. Uh, there's a big part of it. But, you know, putting a percent on what the, on public safety what we're doing and we're keeping the levy down. I mean, we've done all of this 6.2% with sheriff and still maintain. We've got our levy down to 350 on general basic. And, you know, I, I know it, it looks bad on paper, but it's really turned around, turn that paper upside down and it's a good, uh, we've added a canine unit on the sheriff's department. So, and the training, we've got a lot of training going on. So, and, and working with the budget was my experience. I worked with a million, multi-million dollar budget before I retired, and I came on the county. I'm working with a lot bigger budget than what I worked in, but a budget is a budget, and we can still maintain this public safety with that 6.2% increase and try to hold it down as long as we keep our general basic down. Thank you. <laughs> My next question will be for Bob and Nina, and Bob will go first. In our communities, there's a huge need for senior citizen adult daycare services. 
barriers to starting a new service are inadequate reimbursement rates, a caregiver workforce shortage, and no capital grants for site acquisition and preparation. As a supervisor, how would you approach getting this service started and funded at a sustainable level? Interesting question, Bob. I think uh, one of you guys said that it, uh, we keep getting older. I think Shane and we're going to keep right on dying. So as we get older, and uh, we have a we have created ourselves a, a bigger problem. And uh, I am uh, I have been looking at uh, getting older for quite a while now. And I know what my mother said, and she said, if this is getting old, I don't think I like it. Um, I don't have, I really don't have a clear answer. I think we sit down and we work with our community leaders and uh, try to get the expertise together to uh, uh, help where we can. Um, I don't know that the county taxpayers can uh, handle taking care of it when we have a federal structure like we have for uh, Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, so we may have to just support that. And I don't, I don't have a clear answer. Thank you. Nina? This is actually um, a subject that has been near and dear to me for quite some time now. Um, Quite a few years, actually. Uh, I have seen firsthand the senior um, citizens that are needing certain help. They need some sort of in-home health or some sort of care that they are not able to get due to, um, again, Burlington has that. Des Moines County has that. But they don't take all insurances. They do not take into effect the income of our community. They are extremely high priced, so nobody can afford them that are coming of that age and needing that care. We definitely need to look further into that as a community, not just as um, a board of supervisors. As a community, we need to look into that and take care of our elders. I mean, they. They are the ones that raised us. They are the reason we are here. And we need to figure out something for them, absolutely. And I would love to even take part in, in working with that, whether I am elected in this year or not. I would, I would love to take part in getting something figured out for senior citizens. The next question will be for Jim and Shane. And Jim, I'll ask you to go first. Many persons with disabilities or mental illness are at risk of homelessness because of the absence of both affordable housing and rental utility assistance, rental or utility assistance. The current supports often aren't available soon enough or are too little to cover the initial cost for moving into a home. Homelessness, homelessness is a serious and growing problem in our county. As a supervisor, how would you act to lend additional support to at-risk vulnerable people? Start with you, Jim. Well, that's a real good question. Before I came on the board, and it's been several years ago, they got rid of the county home. And that, I, I feel that that was really a big mistake because there was a lot of indigent people and a lot of homeless people that uh, that's where they ended up. That's what a county home was originally for. And it was county funded with county tax dollars. And uh, thanks to uh, organizations like yours at uh, Hope Haven and that, they've, they've taken up the, the slack and, and they've put some of these people out in, in residential homes like the gover government wanted to. Uh, as, as far as the county, what we could do to that is to just keep working the way we are with uh, through our uh, mental health system with uh, 
with Ken and just trying to stay on top of it. That's really a hard, a hard subject to, to even comprehend what to do, Bob. So that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Shane? Give it to me again, Bob. Any persons with disabilities or mental illness are at risk of homelessness because of the absence of both affordable housing and rental or utility assistance. The current supports often aren't available soon enough or are too little to cover the initial cost for moving into a home. Homelessness is a serious and growing problem in our county. As a supervisor, how would you act to lend additional support to at-risk vulnerable people? Homelessness is a problem in Des Moines County for people with mental health. It is. And uh, because it's a problem, we're finding uh, a lot of them ending up uh, as their temporary homes at Great River Medical Center and uh, Des Moines County uh, uh, Police, uh, I'm sorry, the Des Moines County Jail. Um, so uh, it's going to have to be everybody working together. What I can do is, is to uh, help facilitate and to look for and to reach out to and have conversations with nonprofits. Um, when, when I was on uh, Mayor of Burlington, we had a gentleman come down and he asked for some money for some help and he's trying to help us, uh, Burlington, the city of Burlington with our homeless problem. I was one of the people that agreed uh, to giving this man some money uh, to show support for what he was doing. Uh, but I want, you to, I want you to take this in because everybody has to be on board on this. In my community, in the city of Burlington, I've got somebody that won't talk to me to this day. But in my community, uh, we have a million-dollar animal shelter. And I love animals. I love animals. Don't send me mail. I hate mail. I love animals. But we've got a million-dollar animal shelter and a $55,000 homeless shelter. And I'm saying you do the math. So until we can all come together and recognize what the problem is, because, you know, we say, I'm not homeless, but it's a social problem. And if it affects a small group, it affects everybody. How does it affect them? that they're wandering on the streets. And one night it's gonna get cold and they're gonna look for some warmth in some, in some house or in, a, in a building. And maybe that building may be yours. All of these things, they coincide and they affect each other. So until the community as a whole really gets serious about it and says, hey, uh, to, the, to the people that represent them, we want you to get serious about it. Um, we're always going to have a problem with that. And, and I, I hate to, to think that somebody won't get serious until uh, the problem affects them uh, in their own home. Uh, but we do have to take action. And as a county supervisor, uh, if I'm elected, I will definitely be open uh, to listening to anybody that wants to take an active role in helping our community out with this problem. The Hawkeye will pose the next questions. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. The first question is, many of you on the board have talked about mental health. And while it is a state, pro while it is a local problem, it is also a state problem. So what do you see as the role of, the role of the Board of Supervisors being in making sure that there are changes at the state level? Can I go? That's the question. Oh, okay. So she didn't uh, have y'all respond individually, but maybe we'll start with uh, uh, Nina in responding to that. Well, I um, I'm not sure what the um, correct way is to go about going to the state level from a supervisor standpoint, but I would absolutely um, go to bat for our community with the state at the state level at to any means necessary. Um, I would I would definitely um, definitely look into doing the best I could to get us the Des Moines County community the help that we need to get our numbers down or to help our community with mental health. Thank you. Shane, I'll have you go next. Okay. Um, I would say that it's about um, 
communication and making friends and allies. Um, as you get into positions like this, you get to meet more and more people that are involved uh, in uh, policy. I, I would just like to say that um, from the big to the, from the great things to the small things, and this is small and somebody probably laugh and run me down for it, but uh, we had this thing in the community called the fireball run. And uh, some people came through, uh, through our city. Well, the producer, when he came through, I got a chance to meet him. And through making connections and making uh, uh, friendships, uh, some of the people that I met, the producer as well, we talked, and I was showing him on the, the crooked road. Through that, through that friendship, he called me at uh, 11.30 at night one night and says, hey, I've got an idea. He says, what have you been talking about, the, the crooked road? He said, because it's not registered. We've always said it's the crookedest road in the, in the, in, uh, in the United States. Well, it wasn't because uh, it was never proclaimed that. And uh, through the connections, through making an ally and a friend, uh, we got that taken care of. We had uh, uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not come down. They gave us a new plaque and it's in Ripley's Believe It or Not book. And we're in the 100, the number one of the 100 odd spots in America to come visit to see uh, our crooked street. That came through making communication and connections. While I was on the Facebook, while I was on the baseball run, the fireball run, I met a guy that played in a movie called Clerks. His name is Brian O'Halloran. Uh, he called me this morning. He knew that I had the, this deal coming up, and he called me this morning just to wish me luck. And he says, if there's anything I can do to help your campaign, he says, let me know. That comes through communication, making friendships, and making allies. And I think that's important because you're going to have to have somebody higher than you to be able to speak for you. And I'm willing to, uh, to make that commitment, and I, I think I have a gift at doing it. So um, I feel like that's, that's where I would be. <clears throat> Bob Beck, we'll have you go next. Hey, it's a, that's a, an issue that we have all worked on for a long time, and that is uh, what can we do for mental health? And it's uh, certainly a problem that is growing, not going away. And since our regional, plant, a regional group has gotten together, state reorganized the way we handle mental health, we don't have the uh, say-so over our own, own uh, uh, entity, I guess. So it, it's all decided by a group of, I believe, uh, eight counties. And uh, I think they're doing a good job and I think they're controlling our county spending and they're getting most of these funds from the state. And I have been in Des Moines with Bob when he went and talked to senators and congressmen about mental health and what they could do and how they could redirect their funds to help him and uh, people like him and his organization, which we are so thankful to have the Hope Haven. It is uh, a tremendous asset for Southeast Iowa. And uh, they use some of our county facilities, they rent them and uh, are reimbursed, I believe, by uh, Medicare. And they, have, uh, they, they are working very hard on it, and we want to encourage them as much as we can in any way we can to help our mental health. But get those drugs off the streets. That'll help us an awful lot. Kim? Well, I agree with uh, Bob. You know, mental health, uh, we, we've got a, uh, a mental health levy of a, uh, 0 0.93 and we spend about 1.9 million dollars a year on a mental health budget uh i agree with bob if, if we get the if we get the uh, drugs off the street our mental health is going to go down in des moines county that's that's the step that we've got to take and i appreciate everything that, that uh, hope haven does with the dual dual diagnosis center that they started and uh and helping these people with mental health. It, it's a big asset to our county and the surrounding counties. But uh, until we uh, get the good good plan coming down from the state, from the feds to the state, and everything coming down and they depend on the counties to do it, a lot of times the funding's not there, Bob. But uh, our SEAL region is, uh, that's the Southeast Iowa Link, that's the eight counties in the mental health. They're doing the best they can What's the dollars they got? And like Bob said, we have no control over what our county does. Uh, we've just got to say so in it, and they've got their own board. 
So that's what it is. Thank you. I believe the Hawkeye has another question. Yes. Our second question is, what do you think should be the priority of the board when it comes to budget season? And I'd just like all of you guys to answer that question. Bob can tell you whatever order is supposed to go. I think we'll start with Shane this time. I think the priority of the board is going to be uh, being fiscally responsible, um, which uh, uh, looking at their prior budgets, uh, I have no, uh, I have no qualms there, but I think another one of the big priorities is going to be communication. The, uh, I've, I've uh, was the mayor of the city of Burlington for six years, but a lot of the conversations that we would, that would take place, it would end up being greater Burlington. We're doing it down here at the greater Burlington partnership doing this because it's, it's greater than Burlington. It's an ask Burlington. It's an aspect of Des Moines County. It's a part of Des Moines County, but Des Moines County is bigger than that. It's uh, it's all the communities together, you know, saying Meepo and uh, Middletown, uh, Danville, it's all these communities together, West Burlington. So uh, I would like to see, I would like to see us be more efficient. I, I see, I see problems coming down the, uh, coming down the pike uh, that I think we're gonna have to make some adjustments with. And I think the, the, the best way that we can make those adjustments is, is focus on us being efficient and communication is the key to that. Working together as a community, um, all of us together, and also the mayors of the communities working together with the county supervisors. In the community, every once in a while, things will come up and you'll almost get a vibe that it's a us or against them type of, them type of deal. And I, I, wanna, I wanna remove that. I wanna find any use, any way possible to just kick that out of the way and, and make it all a, an us thing because we, we sink or swim together. Somebody said earlier is that if something affects uh, Henry County, it's going to affect us in Des Moines County. Well, how true that is. If it happens to Lee, something affects Lee County, that's what you learn in uh, sociology. It's a social problem, and that's that's a that's a fact. So um, I would like to focus on making sure that we get the message out, making sure that we're transparent, and making sure uh, that there is communication going between all levels of government. Because the more that we communicate, we will uh, uh, will be efficient, will function better. Uh, uh, with efficiency comes savings, uh, and with savings comes more opportunity. So um, that's that's high priority. Bob, you would be next. Bob's next. Um, I, I agree with Shane, we're fiscally responsible, or fiscally conservative in my opinion. Uh, we have to do what the county wants and needs and uh, do it reasonably. We have to plan ahead. We have to figure out that we won't let uh, our bridges go closed. We won't be able to transport our products to market. Uh, we're in the process of building our bridge across the Flint Creek at, uh, down by Case Company. And that old bridge is going to start falling apart. We want to get it fixed before if that happens, and our county engineer has been doing that all the way around. Uh, everybody wants to know why we don't have concrete roads. Well, a million dollars a mile, we can't afford it. Um, this is a it, this is a hard hard decision. We spend a couple of weeks of uh, really a hard pounding from our department heads and. Um, then we have three months to make that decision on what we're going to spend it on and what we're not. And uh, some people are happy and some people aren't. So uh, in the whole thing though, I think we've done very well. Our infrastructure's in very good shape. We've put new roofs on the courthouse. We've uh, built roads. We've added rock to the roads. We've uh, um, got our bridges up in very good shape. Uh, I think our county government's in pretty good, pretty good standing, and still support mental health, public health, uh, law enforcement is a big deal. It, you know, that's six and a half million, and I think if you cut the drugs out of that, they'd cut take a third of that off. So you might have to throw some money at some policemen in order to stop those drug traffics, but it needs to happen. Yeah. 
uh, when, when it comes to budget season, we, we sit down with our department heads, we sit down with the elected officials, and we, we have uh, some really good discussions on where the money's at and uh, see where they're coming from. Like, uh, like Bob said, on the, on the bridges, we spent a lot of money on our secondary roads doing the bridges uh, in the last eight years. Since I've been on the board, we've worked on 19 bridges, either replaced them or resurfaced them. Uh, and it takes a lot of money to do that. We've added on the, on the sheriff's department, and if we do keep the drugs off the street, like Bob says, that that's probably would cut that by a third. But uh, you take all this into effect, we, we work with other elected officials too, and they're elected by the people of Des Moines County. And they're, they're uh, responsible for their budget. So they bring their budget to us and we, we go over the budget with them too. But uh, they, they have their own budgets. And so it, it, it's different than working with like a town of Minneapolis or Dan, but even Burlington or West Burlington. Uh, the only elected officials are the ones on the board. So you can cut their budgets where we don't, we, we have a little trouble cutting budgets sometimes. So, but uh, you got to keep that in mind and work well with them like we have been. And I think we've got a good working relationship with our uh, department heads and our county officials. So, doing this, that's why we've got a $3.50 general basic levy and the lowest levies we've had in 17, 19 years. Thank you. Nina? Well, um, just like Shane said, I haven't had a, uh, I haven't looked at the books or anything. And like I've said in the past, you know, I'm brand new to the political uh, field and everything. So I'm not 100% sure on how to answer this, but I mean, communication, like I've said, communication, uh, new set of eyes, new set of ears to go over everything and look at everything and work with the um, elected officials that are bringing those budgets to you so you can figure out and um, make sure that we are having our funds um, put to where they need to be and make our community even better than what it already is. Thanks, Bob. You're welcome. Each candidate will now have an opportunity to make a two-minute closing statement. doesn't have to be two minutes. But I know Rachel won't let it go longer. Bob Beck, you'd be first. <laughs> well, first, let me say thank you to the partnership and the Hawkeye for putting this form on and letting us come to the voters and talk to them uh, and present some of our ideas. Uh, there's no way you can handle county government in any two minute speech or uh, one hour discussion. This is a uh, this is a deal in every one of our, what, 40 some different departments that we have uh, could spend an hour talking on any of them uh, with lots of differences of opinions. But I, I think we've done a good job and I'm uh, quite satisfied when I first came to uh, have, uh, well, my interview with the Hawkeyes, I think it was Jim Quirk. And uh, he gave me all these questions, and I answered them, and I thought they ought to be answered. And when I got through, one of his questions was, was what's the worst problem you have? And I don't remember what I said, but when we were through with the interview, I asked him, I said, well, do you think our worst problem is? And he says, your tax rate, your highest mistake. It was 475 for our uh, general basic. And um, when, we, when we took that... Uh, I, when I got elected, you put me in here. I went to our budget director, and of course, you're an expert right after the first of the year. The, I went to the budget director and said, can we get that down? She says, you bet we can. And I know where all those it's hidden. And that's, that's what it takes. You have to know who's got that money, who's tucked it away, and why they're spending it like they're spending it. And we put in five-year budgets, uh, uh, expectations for spending, um, make a chart, put our department heads to uh, figure out what they're going to have to have so we can plan for it. Like the airport improvement. They came to us uh, six years ago and told us and we started putting money away for that improvement. 
Thank you for your support. Jeff, we'll be next. I would also like to thank the Burlington Partnership and the Hawkeye for putting this on. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been kind of fun listening to these different uh, decisions here. But, you know, I'd, I'd like to say since, uh, since I've been working with the Board of Supervisors and uh, <clears throat> we've, we've resurfaced uh, Highway 99 from, from uh, the Maker Landing Road to the Louisa County line, and we've resurfaced uh, Highway 99 all the way over, except through Minneapolis, all the way over to the Henry County line. We've, we've spent uh, a lot of, lot of uh, dollars on that, and uh, we've been working on the infrastructure, been working on the jail, been working on the Sheriff's Department, and you know, I would just like to continue doing this and then just keep this going, what we've done for Des Moines County. And I really feel that uh, Des Moines County is a place to live and people will come as long as we keep the infrastructure up, and make the street safe to, uh, to uh, walk down the street. And uh, with that being said, uh, that's why I'm asking you for your vote when it comes time in this uh, general election to reelect me as one of your county supervisors. Thank you. You know, you'll be nice. I would also like to thank the, the partnership and the Hawkeye for hosting this. I'm sure it's a little unorthodox with COVID-19 and everything. I'm sure this is not the way we were meant to be doing this. Um, again, I know I'm saying it, I'm like a broken record. Um, I do not have a political background whatsoever, but everyone has to start somewhere. And I believe this is the spot for me to start and to help make our community even better than what it is. Um, kind of like the field of dreams, build it and they will come. If we continue to build Des Moines County and go forward and make sure that we are um, continuing to strive and to make sure that our community is great, we're going to have an even amazing community after that. And uh, I look forward to the elections and I hope to have some of your guys' votes. Jane? I would like to close out with a TV show. <laughs> I was uh, I was sitting with my daughter, wanted to spend some time with her. And of course, if you want to spend time with your kids, you got to watch what they watch. So she was watching some crazy uh, American crimes. And I'm watching this show and it's about a guy, he was, he had an, invest, he was an investment broker and he was running a Ponzi scheme. And he, oh man, he just ruined the lives of not strangers, but people that he lived in the same community with and that he went to school with and, and even relatives. And at the end of the show, me and my daughter were talking and I said, whoo, man, I said, I just don't, now this guy could do this because he got some jail time. My daughter says, yeah, dad, you know, you're not jail material, kind of laugh, laugh. And I said, well, it's just not about the jail time. I said, I don't know how this guy could do that to the people that put their trust in him. I don't know how he could possibly do that. And I just want to uh, tell Des Moines County, as eight years on uh, city council and six years as mayor of Burlington, um, I tried to make sure that every day that the citizens of the, of the community could put their trust in me. And if you vote for me on November 3rd, I want you to know that you'll be able to put your trust in me, that it will not betray Des Moines County that I'll face you every day. I'll be accessible. I'll see you in the stores. You can ask me the tough questions and I'll answer. But I want Des Moines County to know that they can have faith in putting their vote uh, on Shane and McCampbell because I will not betray your trust. I want to thank the candidates for their interest in serving Des Moines County. It's an important job. I would also like to thank everyone for tuning in today. We have another forum that will be on Wednesday, September 23rd at noon, and that's a forum for the candidates for state senator. So thank you, and this concludes our legislative forum.